Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I have attempted to make a little bit of a more cozy, cozy setup here. Did some warmer lighting. I'm all about making these videos really cozy and comforting. I personally really enjoy watching tarot readings that are a little bit soothing, a little bit relaxing. Now, obviously, <laughs> these are messages from the Morrigan. So nine times out of 10, we're going to be talking about some intense stuff, some shadow work. Um, and so, I mean, that's just kind of par for the course with the Morrigan. But I figured if we're going to be if we're going to be getting into the weeds with the hard stuff within life, we might as well, we might as well feel a little bit more cozy. All right, let's go ahead and get started with our usual prayer to the Morrigan. I am using the book Prayers to the Morrigan by Stephanie Woodfield and Karen Storminger. So I will take a moment here and I will ask the Morrigan based on the energies in the collective, based on the energies of those who are here for this reading, what is a prayer that is needed for all of us? interesting so this is very specific huh okay um i wonder if this is going to come up in our reading for today so the prayer um that was selected is nevin's prayer for victory in court battles uh, and quick point, I guess I should say, so this this name, N-E-M-A-I-N, -E is one of the um, forms of the Morrigan in the lore that we have. I know to the American or English-speaking audience, this might look like Nemain. And I am, you know, probably the farthest person from the language police or the pronunciation police. But I'm pretty sure that that is pronounced Nevin. So that is how I will say it. Goddess of battle, Nevin, you who are without falsehood, reveal the truth in my situation. Aid me in my battle, speaking words of power. Turn my enemies' weapons against themselves. Bring confusion to their arguments. Turn the tide to my side. Passionate and skilled one, may my victory be swift. Hail Morrigan. Interesting. Very curious to see if we end up getting into getting into any specifics around perhaps court situations. All right, so let's run through the decks that I'm using really quick here. I am using the Triumphi de la Luna Illustrated Pips Edition by Deviant Moon Art, the Oracle of Black Enchantment, also by Deviant Moon Art. The Animal Oracle by Kim Kranz, The Morrigan's Oracle by Morpheus Ravenna and Hannah Storyteller. And then this little guy is the Royal Mischief's playing card set, also by Deviant Moon Art. Clearly, clearly I have a favorite. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do a jump cut here and prepare the piles for us, and then we'll get into the reading. All right, guys. So this is our spread. <laughs> Lots of cards lots of lots of cards jumped out at me here. And I do want to make a point of saying that literally, literally the cards were jumping out at me in some cases. So we'll go ahead and start with our animal oracles here. Well, we have lamb, we have seen this guy before, and we also have black egg. So black egg jumped out at me and I second guessed myself, um, as I will occasionally do. And then when I was done shuffling after I had gotten lamb, black egg was at the bottom of the deck. And so I chose to pull it in to this reading also. I'm going to skip reading the guidebook for lamb, but I do want to read the guidebook for black egg here. So the black egg is speaking from an authentic voice, the truth. The black egg contains one of life's essential treasures, the truth. Inside of it resides no confusion, excuses, small talk, noise, or lies. Not even white ones. This living and breathing vessel harbors only that which rings true. When this essence is in balance, we speak slowly and clearly. We are drawn to activities like writing, reading, teaching, singing, or perhaps public speaking. Sounds draw us in. Books draw us in. The concept of truth itself draws us in. We start asking questions like, what do I know to be true about myself? And what is true about the world? When the energy of the black egg is not yet accessed, we speak from an unsure place. 
We say things others want to hear, gossip, or repeat stories to justify our subpar behavior. We might even try to convince ourselves that we have no inner truth at all. The energy of the black egg hovers and waits for us to reconnect. It is available at every moment, in every situation. It's the epicenter of truth, the birthplace of our voice. And it is related to the throat chakra, which I find very interesting as well. All right, I'm going to go ahead and flip over all of the other cards here, and then we will get into the reading. All right, so the first thing that jumps out at me here is the justice card, specifically in correlation with the prayer to the Morrigan. I am feeling very strongly that we are looking at some sort of activity within the court systems. Let's hone in on card number 47 for a minute here because this, the imagery of this card is very, very fascinating to me. And the story that this card tells is one, well, first of all, super relevant to the world that we live in right now. And it's something that I do think all of us can really benefit from learning from. And that is this figure here, this sort of wilted, decayed, skeletal figure, is looking at herself in the mirror, held up by this devil character. And again, this deck likes to use devils and demons to represent our shadows. So what this is telling me is that this week we're going to be confronted with an opportunity to re-examine how we see ourselves. This figure sees herself as beautiful, as young, as whole, as healthy. She sees herself in a much more positive light than she actually is. Her shadows, her inner demons are convincing her that she is the good guy, that she is not broken and wilting and decayed. This shadow has lulled her into a false sense of security. We have all been lulled into a false sense of security that we are not the problem. This black cat over here kind of makes me chuckle a little bit too because, well, black cats are usually associated with witches, of course. And I also just love the idea of this animal spirit sort of looking at us from a distance. And for whatever reason, this cat sort of has this energy of, I don't know, mocking this person not mocking I don't know if that's the right word she just this cat looks like she's looking on at this situation as if to say oh dear god here we go again or like this cat knows better and this reminds me of spirit watching us <laughs> of spirit watching us make excuses for ourselves spirit watching us contribute to the problem all while allowing ourselves to be convinced that we are flawless Spirit has been watching us do this. And on one hand, on one hand, they're kind of laughing at us, right? Like there is so much, so much broken in humanity. And there is no shortage of human beings talking about how broken humanity is. And yet there is a shortage of humans proposing solutions. There is a shortage of human beings seeing themselves for what they truly are and admitting to themselves the ways in which they're a part of the problem. Card number nine is interesting to me because this is all about purging ourselves of sickness. Now, could be physical sickness, you know, that could be something that comes into play this next week. But when we see card number nine appear next to card number 47, this is making me think that the sickness we are purging or the sickness that we're being called to purge this week is the sickness of card number 47, the sickness of thinking that we are perfect, the sickness of thinking that the problem lies elsewhere that we have nothing left to fix. We're, we're the good ones. We're one of the good ones. We need to see ourselves clearly because the inability to see ourselves clearly is this sickness. And there are two figures in this card. There's this figure and then this figure. This figure is assisting with the purging of the sickness. This figure is standing by, sort of scratching his head, not sure what's going on. These are the two different archetypes of people that we're being presented with as a choice in this situation, right? We can either 
help to assist this lack of self-awareness being purged from humanity. We can assist with that or we can pretend we don't know what's going on. For me, it seems like the energy of black egg is what we're supposed to be utilizing in this process. That the way that we help to expel the sickness of delusion, of lacking self-awareness, is by saying what we really mean. I have been thinking a lot lately about self-censorship. Maybe that's what I title this reading. I don't know. We'll see. But I grew up in organized religion and Christianity, and there was a really big emphasis in Christianity on thought policing, on this purity of thought, on making sure that you're a good person by saying all of the right things and thinking all of the right things and doing all of the right things. And that was an energy that was always really gross to me personally. And it was one of the biggest turnoffs for me, frankly, when it came to Christianity. And I could make a whole video going into that in more detail, but I'll leave it there because now what sort of happened and it, it kind of Honestly, when I reflect upon it, it took me by surprise. Um, but now that I see it, now that I see it for what it really is, right? Now it doesn't surprise me at all. Now it just frustrates me. Now it's a sickness that I feel like must be purged from our society. And that is that thought policing, that desire for purity in all aspects has expanded beyond just organized religion. Make no mistake, it's still... It's still well embedded in organized religion, but it has now been co-opted by our mainstream. And I could assign that to one political party. I could. But the reality is, is that both of them are perpetuating this idea, this idea of groupthink, this idea that we are not the problem. We are beautiful. We are perfect. Our bullshit is good. <laughs> Being blind to the bullshit. Ugh. I think that's what I'm going to title this video. Everyone is blind to the bullshit. And what's worse What's worse is that we're all making excuses for why it's not bullshit to begin with. But anyway, back to the censorship, this thought policing, this, and it's not physical censorship in all cases. Sometimes it is, like, don't get me, things are trending in a very concerning direction. But even when I think about, so I'm a YouTuber, obviously, there are every once in a while, like the word bullshit, I said it and I was like, oh no, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on the internet. And I get advertising, blah, 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 all that nonsense. But why I am a 20, almost a 29 year old adult woman on the internet. Why the fuck can't I say whatever I want to say without fear of repercussion? What's going on there, guys? And look, that's a shadow of mine in some aspects, right? The Morrigan has really, and it's very interesting that Black Egg is coming up because the Morrigan has been, frankly, not allowing me not allowing me to act like a child, because that's what this is. <laughs> that's what this thought policing, morality policing, inability to say hard things, inability to process more adult themes. Not only is it frankly a really boring, boring way to live. Again, I am an adult in an adult space. Like I know kids can also be on the internet, but you know, that's up to the parents to, you know, pay attention to their kids, God forbid. But I am an adult in an adult space. I am more than allowed to say adult things. And if me saying those adult things makes other adults uncomfortable, that's a them problem, not a me problem. It's this infantilization of humanity. That's, and that's what bothered me about Christianity was especially in the realm of sexuality, right? I would very often hear peers within within Christian circles who were married, adults with kids in some cases, very infantilized in how they chose to, to speak about sexuality. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be private about that. I'm not saying you have to be like out there and loud about it. But it's this sort of shy, giggling schoolgirl vibe that always made me think, wow, this is really immature. The point is, is that it's extended now beyond organized religion, where there is this infantilization, this inability to say adult things in adult spaces that has transcended organized religion and is now within the mainstream of humanity. And it's been subtle. 
over time. Like I remember being a young teenager. The internet was kind of like the wild west, right? Like people were saying all kinds of crazy shit all over the place. And again, I get it. Sponsorships and advertisers and blah, blah, blah. I get it. But at the same time, we're not children and we're treating ourselves like children. Not to mention, again, it's just a fucking boring way to live your life. Like constantly, constantly stopping and thinking to yourself, am I allowed to say this? What are we doing, guys? So to recap this row before we move on to our other cards here, we've got this very... (laughs) Very poignant, very necessary shadow. And by the way, this shadow is more obvious in other people, right? If you're listening to me talk about how we are not seeing ourselves clearly, it's going to be really easy and really tempting for you to think about another person, right? Like a politician or people that are very heavily invested in one side or the other, like their shadow of not seeing themselves clearly is going to be heightened, more obvious. And there's nothing wrong with reflecting on that of, you know, especially when someone out there gets under your skin or says something that's frustrating. It's definitely helpful to realize why they're doing it and the shadow behind it. But make no mistake, this is a problem we all have, that when things happen out there, our default is to seeing ourselves as the good guy and not realizing the ways in which we are participating in the problem. We're being asked to this week work on expelling that sickness from us. Now, this is a very long process. This is a very, I mean, this is a theme, frankly, that could take an entire generation. Um, But regardless, let's pay attention this week to the ways in which we're not seeing ourselves clearly. And let's lean into more of this figure here in assisting purging this rather than pretending like we don't know what's going on. And a tool for doing this, by the way, is calling things as they are, saying things bluntly and to the point. And moreover, not being afraid of consequence. That's a big one. Man, I feel like I could make a whole a whole video about that in and of itself, but we are in desperate need of people that are willing to say things how they see them, clearly and bluntly, without fear of repercussion. We have a very, we have a hole. It's interesting, black egg, it made me think of black hole a little bit here, but we are missing that in society right now. All right, let's move on over to our tarot cards here. All right, so as I mentioned, this is making me think that we're gonna see some sort of activity within the courts. It certainly wouldn't be out of left field, right? Like we've been, We've been dealing with Supreme Court issues, local court issues for quite some time now. So it definitely fits in with what we've been seeing. Um, This five of coins, by the way, oh man, this boy, (laughs) this boy came out at me. I don't know why I felt like saying this boy. This guy came out at me so many times today. I was shuffling my tarot deck before I started this reading because I wanted to, you know, just kind of refresh the energies, talk to it a little bit, get the energies going here. And five of coins kept coming out over and over and over again. And so in the spirit of Black Egg, I'm just going to speak plainly about this. And you guys know, I don't usually like to make hard predictions about things. But to me, this is just, this is just very, very clear. Um, So Five of Coins is the energy of feeling left out of something, feeling shut out from the resources that you need. And you're sort of out in the cold, alone, isolated, and you're this, this, um, This window here has all of the resources within it. It's nice and warm and you're not allowed into the building. Then we introduce the card of justice, obvious card. Then we introduce the energy of the star. Now this particular star, I have two star cards in my deck. This one, the star represents optimism for the future, hope for the future. In this particular star, I asked the Morrigan to use in situations where there is something to be optimistic about in the collective. So my other star card is optimism within your own personal life. This star card is optimism for what happens out there. Um, So this little progression here seems to be very, very positive. 
we're taking a situation where people, we the people, intuitively, that's what I'm feeling, we the people feel shut out from the resources that we need. Something steps in in the form of justice and gives us something to be hopeful for in the future. Additionally, and again, I just love, I love when this tarot deck does this. This tarot deck, by the way, I, I have never felt energy come off of a deck like this before. And it's, yeah, I just feel very connected to this deck. Anyway, I, so I love when the figures are all facing certain directions. And you'll notice this card, this card, and this card are all facing this way. This Empress card is facing against them. And she has the Joker behind her with its middle finger up and fire coming out of its ass, um, standing behind her sort of like, you know, on her side. Now, I know what the Empress normally means, but again, this deck does its own dang thing and I love it. This Empress and her correspondent Emperor, I hate them. I hate them so much. This look on her face, this shitty little look, she looks like, this gives me very like let them eat cake energy, you know? she she's wearing this mask right this sort of hardened angry mask and then out of the other side of her face it's like she's chilling like she's she's chill she's blowing smoke oh so i wonder okay so in whatever situation we're looking at here whatever form of justice, court case, something's happening to make us hopeful for the future. I think there's going to be someone, probably a female figure, standing in opposition to it. And she's going to appear with this hardened, angry energy. But out of the other side of her face, she's blowing smoke. And that would be backed up by the Joker, sort of this trickster energy. Like, I just, I really feel like whatever is happening in a legal sense, there's going to be someone, it could be female, maybe not. But I, being that it's the Empress, I do feel strongly that it will be female in nature. Um, there will be someone that comes out opposed to whatever this situation is. And she will pretend that it's, you know, this something to be angry about and it's, oh, it's an outrage and how dare they. But out of the other side of her mouth, she's blowing smoke like that's bullshit. She doesn't actually care about the situation itself. She's lying. She's tricking us. She's pretending. And actually, I mean, look, again, future difficult to make predictions. I do feel very strongly about this and I will stand behind that. There are three major arcana cards, but regardless of if, you know, if anything plays out from this, the message still stands and the lesson, the lesson still stands. And that is whenever anything happens, there's always a push and a pull, right? In every single political, social, out there situation, whenever anything happens, there is one side of the country. Well, it's not the entire country because, again, I do like to encourage that we don't have a side. We don't belong to a side. So I don't like talking about it in definitive terms like that. But there is always, whenever something happens, whenever a decision is made, whenever legislation is passed, whenever a change occurs, there is always one side that is super into it, super optimistic, super happy about it happening. And then there's always another side that pretends like it's the end of the fucking world. And it never is. Um... Because nine times out of 10, whatever's happening out there doesn't actually benefit we the people. Um, it's usually a, a dog and pony show um, to make us feel like a positive thing is happening when it's just a non-issue. Um, but regardless, regardless of that, there's always this energy of opposition. And I think this empress is really... Really, this is coming up to draw our attention to pay attention to the ways in which we are convinced that something is the end of the world. Something is horrible and, oh, we need to be so up in arms about this thing. And just realize that the people that are trying to gin up that panic, that moral outrage, that how dare they, um, they're blowing a bunch of smoke. 
you know, they're probably a rich bastard. They probably don't actually care about this country or the world or you as a person. Um, they're probably just high on their own supply. I don't know why, why I wanted to say that, but I'm going to keep it in. Blowing smoke. They don't actually care because at the end of the day, they're wealthy. At the end of the day, they have all their needs met. At the end of the day, it doesn't actually matter if they single-handedly destroy our society because they've got everything they need. Also, so Lamb being on the far end of this reading is very, very interesting because it's almost like, again, the Joker is behind this figure, sort of backing her up, revealing the truth. And the Lamb is behind this figure, sort of backing him up, telling the truth. And there's definitely this energy in the collective of being Lambs. Um... <laughs> It's usually, and this has become a joke now at this point, but it's, some, you know, you're being a sheeple, right? You're being a sheep. And I like that it's lamb for us instead of sheep, because I think it plays nicely with the phrase lambs to the slaughter. And that being, if we follow the bullshit, um, if, we, if we choose a side, we become lambs to the slaughter that the only way the only way we will not end up lambs to the slaughter is if we realize we don't have a side or that more accurately our side is us the citizens the people together um against those like this empress who pretend to be outraged pretend to be working for the people and then they're full of shit. It is very, very easy for us being the people that can see what's on unfolding, for us to be very judgmental and critical of the people that are behaving like lambs, that are following a side, following a politician. It's very easy for us to judge those people. The thing, the thing that I think we should focus on here is before we get judgmental, let's maybe ask ourselves why, why people are so willing and so desperate to pledge their allegiance to a political figure. Because I'm noticing a trend where the people that are most vulnerable in our society, most uh, economically vulnerable, are also those that are most vocally and most obviously pledging their allegiance to a side. And I think the best example of this are people who are very invested personally in Donald Trump. Now, quick note here, and you might not like this, but that's fine. I don't, uh, I, well, first of all, I don't like Donald Trump, spoiler alert, but I am not critical of people that voted for him in all cases, because the reality is, is that we have been pushed between a rock and a hard place. Interesting stone. We have been pushed between a rock and a hard place for a very long time. And so I don't fault people for choosing what they view as the lesser of two evils. I will make a video about the concept of the lesser of two evils at some point, but for the sake of this conversation, I am not, I am not, um, I used to be, but I am no longer hypercritical or hyper judgmental of people that have made a decision that they view to be the lesser of two evils. However, there are a group of people within our population that are personally in love with, one might say, although I don't necessarily know if they would admit that, but they are personally invested and a sort of cult of personality around him. And it's very easy, and in fact, you see this all the time in the mainstream media, to ridicule those people, to be hyper harsh and aggressive towards those people, to call them all manner of things, and frankly, to blame all of society's problems on them. And spades a spade. It gets classist real fast, guys, um, to the point where sometimes I don't know if the people making fun of what we would call MAGA Trump supporters, if they're making fun of them for liking Donald Trump or if they're making fun of them for being poor. That's the tone it takes very often. And I don't think we like admitting that to ourselves. I don't think we like admitting how poisonous and disgusting that is. But I don't think it's any coincidence that the lamb archetype is so close 
to the archetype of those of us, those citizens that are shut out from the resources that they need. When you are stripped of basic human dignity, when you don't have your needs met, when you are living paycheck to paycheck, when you don't know where your next meal is coming from, there is this sense of hopelessness that is tied in with that. And when someone comes along, even if they're full of shit, but when someone comes along and tricks you that they are on your side, that they're this, actually, this kind of looks like Trump. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not trying to be rude, but it kind of does. And this archetype actually really reminds me of Trump, where he comes into the scene very aggressively, very like, I'm going to fix things. I'm going to make everything better. I'm going to be the one to help you guys. And, you know, we know out of the other side of that is absolute blowing smoke. It's bullshit. But I, it is not easy to fault people for believing that. And even if, even if you're thinking to yourself, I don't know how the hell you believe that. And I have those moments. I think at the very least, at the very least, we could have enough humanity to understand that when someone swoops in, again, even if they're blowing smoke, but when someone swoops in and claims to be something to be hopeful for, that that is going to provide relief for people that don't have their needs met. Humanity is very easy to manipulate in that when things are hopeless, we need hope. Otherwise, Otherwise, we become very self-destructive. So I'm just saying that to say um, when when we see people and this does swing the opposite way, I should be very clear about this. And I do like to put this in most of my videos. Um, the themes that we see on one side of the political aisle, we also see on the other. So this lambs to the slaughter. I know I used the example of Trump supporters. And again, I want to be very clear, like hyper Trump supporters, not just the people that chose him over the other side. I mean, like people that are very invested in him as a person. I know I use that as an example, but I want to be very, very clear that that lambs to the slaughter absolutely exists on the other side. In fact, I don't know, man, some days, some days I don't know which is worse when it comes to lambs to the slaughter. Um, and again, card number 47, we need to pay attention to the ways in which we are also doing this. It is very, very easy to point the finger out there. Um, and so very often we are perpetuating the same problems. I didn't mention how there's two jokers over here, which I do think is incredibly interesting, um, very synchronistic. Again, I think this joker being pointed in this direction, sort of more antagonistic, right? He's got his middle finger up. He sort of has this more coming at you energy. Um, it's very interesting how those there's again, there's this like force of fighting and colliding. And this Joker, however, is a little bit more subdued. And he's walking in the opposite direction. And he's coming after purging the sickness. So I'm saying this to say that I think we're going to see something in the collective this week of some sort of either court situation or something that makes one side of the political party really excited while also making the other side up in arms, frustrated, angry. Um, you know, there's there will be moral panic on the other side. And again, it will be feigned moral panic. Those doing the moral panicking will be blowing smoke up our ass. The solution to that for us, the aware, the spiritual. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I don't like the, no, we're the spiritual people. But you know what I'm trying to say. Um, the solution for us is to see the ways in which we are contributing to the problem and to purge that from ourselves. And this will help to rid us of this trickster energy. When you see yourself clearly, when you stop seeing yourself as this infallible good guy all the time, and you see the ways in which you're a part of the problem, and then you work to expunge that, that makes you untrickable. That makes you un <laughs> unfuckwithable. <laughs> you can't be tricked. And that Miley Cyrus song just popped into my head that I can't be tamed. Um, but you can't be tricked. And again, utilizing this black e egg energy in this process, saying things how they really are, 
calling a spade a spade. We've now, and now I'm gonna address these cards up here. And these are cards from the Morrigan specifically. The first thing that's coming to mind for me with these, and we have the stone, the shield, and lack. This lack card, I think this is, interestingly enough, I wanted to say the trump card. And what I mean by that is this is this is the energy that we are being manipulated with at, at the back end of everything, right? Behind every problem, problem that is real or manufactured in the collective. The fear comes from this place of lack that if we do this thing, we won't have enough. Or this thing is right around the corner that will cause us to not have enough. As I said earlier, humans are very, very easy to manipulate. When we don't have enough, we become easy to control. You know, it was no secret back in, oh God, I am not a historian, but back in ye olden days of kings and emperors and all that nonsense, um, it was pretty common practice for lack to be imposed intentionally. And if you look at, I'm just, again, I'm American, um, quite obviously by my Midwestern accent, um, I'm American, so I'm focused on America when I talk about this, but I'm sure it rings true for many countries around the world. We have the resources to fix a lot of our problems. Dare I say most of our problems. This lack, I think this is being done intentionally. In fact, that's not even a conspiracy theory. It's being done intentionally, all right? And it's for the exact reason that I spoke about over here. When you don't have enough when you're living paycheck to paycheck, when you have no hope for what could potentially come next, you are very easily slotted into this category of lamb to the slaughter. You are much, much easier to control when you are tired and hungry and confused and hopeless and you feel like you are in a state of lack. You are so much easier to control. And so naturally, the Morrigan's instructions to us is to shield ourselves from that. And to stand strong like this stone, to root ourselves down into the ground and become unswayable. And the question I think that we all have to ask ourselves is what matters more to us? And this does play into the lesser of two evils, which again, I will be making a whole video on at some point. But the question we need to ask ourselves is what is more important to us? standing strong in our principles and not allowing ourselves to be manipulated and preyed upon? Or do we fear what is around the corner so much that we are willing to tie ourselves to someone that we know, we know, is corrupt, is self-interested, does not have our best interest in mind, is perhaps the lesser of two evils, but at the end of the day, will still enact evil? What is more important to us? Doing whatever we can to make ourselves feel better in the moment or to lie to ourselves that if we do something, they'll take care of us because we fear this lack? Or are we willing to take the chance that things might not work out for us, that there might be pushback, that those that were in control, the powers that were, as it's called, that they will fight against us, that they will try and scare us, they will do everything in their power to scare us so that we are again their lambs. But are we willing to be strong, to put up that shield, put up that defense, to trust ourselves? Mm. I intuitively felt like pulling one more card. And so here it is, it's Sanctuary. And you can tell this is like a, a fort, right? There's a community inside and there's a fort, there's a gate and it's being watched, it's being manned, and you're safe. You are safe. We have the ability to create sanctuary for ourselves and for each other. And that is exactly what we should do because they will fight against us. They will fight back. The struggle for power is not going to go away anytime soon. It's literally always been existent in pretty much all of recorded human history if not literally all of recorded human history. So how are we gonna make a sanctuary for ourselves? What can you do this week to create a sensation of sanctuary for yourself 
and for those in your life that you consider to be your community. This can be a physical sanctuary, this can be a spiritual sanctuary, this can be a sanctuary where people feel like they're able to speak their minds and you won't berate them. We, being we the citizens, have been at each other's throats for a very long time and that is exactly what our ruling elites want from us. So uh, let's stick up our middle finger <laughs> right at them um, and let's build a sanctuary and a community. It doesn't have to be physical. It can be online. It can be spiritual. It can be whatever you feel called to create. And it's very, very simple. You know, you don't need to, you don't need to start a group. You don't need to do anything, anything out of the ordinary. All you have to do is when you're having conversations with people and you hear something you don't like, don't lose your shit. We do have an intolerance problem in this country. It's just, um, it's not the type of intolerance that is trendy to talk about. We, we are very intolerant when it comes to people having different opinions from us. And again, that swings both ways. Um, go up to a Christian and talk about there being multiple gods and you will be faced with intolerance damn near immediately. So I say that to say the intolerance swings both ways. It swings in every direction, frankly. I have intolerance. You have intolerance. We all do. And it's something we need to work on. It's a fundamental part of maturing as an adult that isn't taught to us intentionally and hasn't been required of us to participate in society lately, intentionally. So let's make that a requirement from now on. In order to be viewed as an adult member of society, you have to be able to hear something you don't like and be okay. How about that? All right, guys, I am going to leave it here for this week. As always, thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.